Budapest, Hungary. I'm very honored to be here in a virtual manner and present the latest updates in calcium PCI treatment uh, to everybody. Uh, I'm from Budapest, Hungary, um, from the Samovice University Heart and Vascular Center. You can see the parameters of, of our institution right here. Uh, I'm the head of the cath lab at this institution. Um, we do about 3,500 PCIs per year on two plus two tables. We handle ACS cases 24-7. We are the Hungarian National Center for Mechanical Circulatory Support and also a shock acute coronary syndrome center. We've been a rotational atherectomy and CHIPS uh, partner site since uh, 2003. Um, this is where Hungary is located in Central Europe and Budapest is the capital uh, where I work. Coronary artery disease is usually called benign coronary artery disease because of the fact that calcified lesions give the impression that there are stable nodules uh, inside the coronary arteries and they cause less adverse events. Yet uh, one must mention that um, a few forms of acute coronary syndrome involve rupture of these calcified nodules um, and usually the residual lumen is much tighter than compared to classical fatty plaque rupture acute coronary syndrome cases and treatment uh, of these arteries is much, much more complex and requires much more finesse. I like to call calcified coronary artery disease an end-stage coronary artery disease because of the fact uh, that it basically uh, has no other method of solving it besides treatment. And the other issue is that it is a difficult to treat coronary artery disease. Why? Because coronary calcification is usually extensive. It involves numerous coronary segments. It's difficult to manipulate and it's usually resistant to classical PCI methods. It's sticky, it's breaky, and um, it requires <coughs> lots of attention as compared to non-calcified coronary artery disease. What are our options? Of course, if you see native coronary calcification on the angiogram, you need thorough uh, lesion preparation. Beware if you fail to comply because you will be having a very bad day in your cath lab. And the choice of devices that you should do for preparation depends on a multitude of factors and usually <laughs> requires more than one method uh, to reach an optimal. Uh, solution. The general idea for lesion prep is, of course, only consider advancing a stent if you are consider if you are convinced that you can deliver and fully deploy it. How should you approach it? Classical classical pre dilatation for balloons may have failed in calcified lesion, and usually there are two reasons. One is you are unable to transmit the balloon uh, to the lesion itself, and two, you are unable to expand the balloon, uh, which of course then you get the classic hourglass phenomenon. The devices indicated for this BTF balloon transmission failure and BEF balloon expansion failure are the following that you can see right here. And of all of these, rotational atherectomy is the one that may be indicated for both. Of course, cutting balloon microtomes, shock waves, orbit atherectomy, and laser atherectomy also has um, its place more or less. First, I'd like to talk about the coronary microtome. I'm very proud to say that this is a Hungarian invention. It was invented and patented in 1993 by a certain Peter Borat. And uh, since then it has evolved to its current iteration, which is the uh, Wolverine coronary cutting balloon from Austin Scientific. This of course has small <clears throat> atheratomic microscalpels on it and it fractures um, relevant 360 degree, mainly or high degree uh, calcific arches and then allows for further lesion preparation and eventual stent deployment. Intravascular lithotripsy or IVL, which is borrowed from the urologist, um, is a uh, promising uh, form of coronary artery dilatation, but still it's in its infancy. The balloon that we have, it's short, it's pretty bulky. It's difficult to reach the lesion of interest. I've used it myself a couple of times. You only have a limited number of pulses and it's expensive. Laser and orbital atherectomy met uh, methods are extremely costly, they are very expensive, and there are only limited worldwide experience uh, with these uh, two devices. And today, probably the best known and most widely utilized method uh, for coronary artery disease involving severe calcification is drilling or buzzing the plaque via rotational atherectomy. The question as a, a proctor for rotational atherectomy I usually get is when and how to use the rotational atherectomy system. The old era was when, whenever we needed to think so, whenever we saw extensive calcification, we went for rotational atherectomy. Nowadays, of course, the modern era in 2021 is um, <clears throat> imaging. What is the primary uh, method of assessment? It's usually IBIS. 
This is the uh, algorithm that we use in Budapest, in Hungary, uh, to determine whether rotational atherectomy is needed or other forms of uh, less invasive uh, calcium treatment are enough, are enough. It has to do with either characteristics of the lesion itself, and we have to assess if it is thick, uh, it's severe, or the degree of calcium is um, over 180 degrees, as you see here, then we automatically reload our blade. If on IBIS characteristics, <clears throat> it's moderate or thin, the extent of calcium, and the degree of calcium arches does not reach 180 degrees, then we usually abstain from rotablation and use other methods, for example, NC balloons, scoring balloons, or microtones. And we always uh, IBIS at the end of a calcium artery uh, PCI. The legacy rotoblator tool that you see right here, the classic rot rotoblator system is more than 25 or rather today almost 30 years old. You can see that it's underutilized um, even um, when you to the fact that it's, uh, it's an extremely stable and very good system. And uh, the numbers that uh, it has been used are still uh, very good, yet um, it is underutilized uh, when we see the extent of calcific coronary artery disease that we see. The rotational atherectomy uh, system, which is the new one, is the Rota Pro, uh, which has lots of benefits um, um, and it has basically evolved from the older Rotolink Plus legacy system. You can see it is without a pedal, which was a real nuisance back then. It's a semi-automatic system. It's very easy to assemble and there is only a one operator requirement for this system. So if need be, you don't even need a nurse, um, which was absolutely required uh, for the earlier iteration. The other question, who should, rotor, uh, who should perform rotational atherectomy? A senior interventional experience uh, interventionalist is of course required. Um, not everybody needs to perform rotational atherectomy uh, in a cath lab, depending, depending on volume uh, of the lab, two or three operators per institution as a maximum is required. Doctor involvement is needed in the initial 10 to 20 cases and our success rate, which we were able to publish in 2015, uh, was over 90% and, and our long-term results um, are acceptable. When do you need to ask a rotoproctor center for help or tertiary uh, center for help like our institution? When you need to perform left main rotational atherectomy, especially with bifurcation lesions, if the patient is problematic, for example, for rotational atherectomy done in uh, decreased left ventricular function, or if mechanical circuitry support may be considered, and also in bailout situations, for example, stent ablation, which is um, uh, an absolute uh, <clears throat> uh, problematic issue if required. Uh, with wire escalation, floppy wires do the trick 90% of the times. If need be, a pathfinder wire may be placed or microcatheter change should be done. Which burr to use? The 1.5 burr is usually optimal for 80% of the cases. Use 140 to 160 k RPMs, which the Rotopro sets automatically. Uh, do the runs for a maximum of 15 to 20 seconds. If you do not penetrate in four to five runs, it's increased speed. If you still do not penetrate, then downsize. There are two uh, methods for handling uh, the burr. Here on the left, you can see pecking, which is more discreet. And here on the right, you can see hammering, which, uh, uh, in which the movement of the, of the burr is much more increased. What to watch for? Burr entrapment, the so-called Kukeshi phenomenon. Uh, when your burr slips over the lesion of interest and it's very difficult to pull out, there are plus points for the Rotopro system because it warns you when you decrease uh, your RPMs. Use um, the pecking technique and not uh, the hammering technique. And with this, uh, you'll have much better results. Um, to justify everything, rotational atherectomy in the uh, 21st century is living a new renaissance. You have to think of old polycomorbid patients in whom there is no other options. The new Rotopro system provides us with excellent uh, means of care. Because remember, we are unable to rotablate, we are unable to revascularize the patient, which means this did not have, the patient does not have survivals, and then we are unable to cure the patient. Dedicated training and proctoring is required though for this system. When in trained experience had, hands, it is a safe and extremely ex effective means of treating otherwise incurable coronary pathologies, which would have been considered uh, basically absolutely incurable even five to 10 years ago. A typical Hungarian patient for you right here, a 67 year old, a 76 year old female, sorry, with an enstemy and acute heart failure. You can see everything right here with a good left ventricular function and an extremely calcified Medina 111 bifurcation left main stenosis on the left dominant coronary artery system 
you can see the NGOs uh, right here. Take a look at the spider view, which is very nice. You can see the extent of the problem right here. Our surgeons were reluctant to perform cabbage on this patient. We, of course, showed this to the heart team. Why? Because of age, comorbidities, the presentation of an enstemy, which surgeons do not like, said that the, uh, the outflow tract was diseased, it was calcified, and well, the situation is difficult because of the pandemic, ICU capacity, etc. All in all, we had to fix this um, via rotational atherectomy and with an interventional method. So um, I had no problems whatsoever wiring the circumflex and with the 1.25 per, I was able to rotablate without any effort. The problems began when it was extremely difficult to wire the LAD. I was only able to wire it first with a full polymer jacket uh, wire, but nothing was, I was able uh, to pass nothing. No micro path, no 1.0 balloon, no 0.75 balloon, nothing. So what I had to do is remove everything and rewire uh, do a primary rewire with a rotational atherectomy extra support wire, which was then luckily successful. Eventually, after about 40 minutes of wiring, um, drilling the left main LED continuum was not um, really too big of an issue. The IVUS still did not cross after this, so I did not perform uh, an IVUS afterwards. What I did was I did a pre-kissing and then used the Wolverine microtones 3.0 by 15 in both directions, left main circumflex and left main LAD. And then what I used was this device. This is the Synergy Megatron stand from Boston Scientific. This is a purpose-built stand for large proximal calcific lesions. It is an absolutely very, very nice device. If you don't have it in your cath lab, get it because it will be a game changer when you're doing left main PCI, especially bifurcations. Then uh, with a tap technique, a second Synergy stand was implanted and uh, you can see that this was our end result that we got. We had a 20% residual stenosis in the proximal LAD, which we did the anivus of. Uh, the minimal lumen area was above 10 uh, millimeters square, which we considered optimal. And then we removed this patient from the table. Uh, she's been, thus far, she's been uh, back uh, to my eye patient department once. She is absolutely uh, free of angina and doing good. And this is an extremely fresh issue that I uh, just done the last week. I only have um, mild quality data of this video. You can see this is a STEMI presentation of an extremely calcified uh, left main branch. Also the proximal LAD and the proximal circumflex are uh, calcified. There is also um, an extent of thrombus inside this left main with calcification and the presentation of an ST elevation MI. This is an extremely difficult situation uh, that you must solve. This was a 65-year-old woman who required an ECMO, so mechanical circulatory support, uh, during uh, the intervention. But luckily afterwards, uh, this was the end result uh, that we were able to achieve. And after four days on the ECMO, she could, she, we were able to decannulate the subject. And um, with an, uh, starting with the initial ejection fraction of 15%, uh, she made it home with a good left ventricular ejection fraction and um, uh, angina-free. Um, the case message that you can see right here involving both cases is that in 2021 and onwards, critically calcified, extremely resilient coronary artery disease will require treatment. We will be able to lean less and less on the surgeons, uh, meaning that maximum operator finesse and experience will be required to solve uh, such issues. And both uh, uh, rotational atherectomy and microtool manipulations are usually required uh, for these types of uh, pathologies. Uh, and also the new purpose-built stent uh, made our lives much, much easier. Thank you very much for uh, your attention. This Thank is you very much. Lake Bolaton in uh, Western Hungary. Thank I'm you very much again. Sure.